are way behind, and I'm going to um, edit myself dramatically because I'd rather save time for you to work on workshops and projects. So let's just slam through some uh, stuff on visualization and visual analytics. So um, why do we, why why think about visualization? Uh, visualization is actually really dangerous, right? So it's very easy to when we're talking about analyzing large amounts of data to use visual, to, to find what you want to see in visualizations. And so there's always this tension between um, the kind of analysis we're uh, talking about wh when we're doing aggregate analysis and summaries and what we see in visualization. But nonetheless, uh, we think visualization is really useful for doing quick checks and especially for um, understanding data because Summary statistics can, in fact, be um, incredibly uninformative about data. So how many people are familiar with this picture? Really? None, except for Bill. OK, <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Um, look at the first one. What's the mean of all of the points along the y-axis, roughly? In the second one? They're all eight. <laughs> so the mean of all on, on the y-axis, the mean on the x-axis, the variance on the y-axis, the variance on the x-axis, the correlation, the linear regression coefficients of all of these data sets are exactly the same. And yet they are clearly different data sets with different patterns. And so by visualizing this, these um, information emerges that we don't necessarily see by descriptive statistics. And so that's why we think a lot about how to build useful visualizations. Um, and so just, uh, we'll talk a little, I'm gonna talk mostly about visualization in the context of uh, Galaxy, some of the things that you can do. And I just, this, this plot is just to let you know that visualization is a much more recent development, so um, you, may, you may encounter some <coughs> challenges and we um, hopefully can work through these things together. And in particular, we should have fixed um, the problem that you were having yesterday and I'll tell you exactly what that was. Um, okay, I'm going to skip a ton here. So one of the first kinds of visualizations that you um, would have encountered yesterday if you go into your Galaxy data set are these various d display applications. And so Galaxy has always had this notion of being able to take your data and try and send it into various display applications like other browsers. Um, and so for example, here is the UCSC genome browser and you can send a variety of data sets from your Galaxy instance out to UCSC. Um, if, the, um, if, if the browser supports the particular genomes that you're working on, genome builds that you're working on. So there's lots of great browsers out there, um, and you might ask why you would think about even building another one, which we have done. And the reason for this is that we, the Galaxy environment is very much about analyzing your own data from, um, from a very raw level these days. So you might be assembling your own genome, putting your own transcriptome on top of that. And so having an environment that's built around your own very raw data um, can facilitate analysis. And in particular, these, as, as you've seen, and as you will see later, a lot of these um, uh, genomic assembly and uh, mapping analysis are very parameter dependent, require a lot of um, experimentation, and so having a visual environment in which you can, that really tightly couples the analysis tools with visualization is useful. And so that's where um, Trackster comes in, and so um, this is this is one uh, picture of Trackster, and basically, it's it, in appearance, it's actually meant to be very similar to the UCC Genome Browser. We think a lot of the display idioms that were essentially invented there are, are very good ones. Um, it's a little different in that it's um, focused around you building up your own browser on your own data, and it's focused on doing everything on, on the client side. Um, and so the, this is showing some RNA-seq analysis, for example, and some of the nice features here are um, as you are, are zooming in, you get gradually more detailed information, and so that gives you, you, know, you can easily look at um, the data at the lowest level of detail, and like I said before, I would encourage you to do this, you know, looking at individual reads, but the fact that you have, um, uh, you're getting progressively um, detailed data means that this can also be efficient. Um, so let me give you, um, do, 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 skip, skip, skip. So the, here's just a little example. So suppose you have um, a genome that you've created in a FASTA format 
or gotten from somewhere. What you can actually do in Galaxy, so we looked at genome builds a little in your first workshop yesterday, but you can actually create your own genome builds. And so under user, there's this custom genomes thing, and you can either provide FASTA or a file containing chromosome links and actually add your own genome build. Once you have that, you can attach any data sets in your history to your own genome build and then start building up your own browser. And so now you have a browser on a genome using a data set that Galaxy had no knowledge of before and that you um, have created yourself. And so the goal here is that you can um, take advantage of in, entirely in a GUI environment, uh, build up genome browsers for um, whatever custom genomes you have. And now we can add, so we have different kinds of tracks here, right? These are annotation tracks for different regions. We have um, continuous score tracks and so on. Okay, another quick example. Um, looking at cancer cell lines with exome and transcriptome sequencing. So uh, suppose we have some um, sequencing data. Now we want to build up a uh, browser for this. So um, this is the other way to create a browser. Rather than starting from a data set, you can just say new um, browser, select the build, in this case HG19. And then we can start to add, you'll get this box, add data sets to visualization. And we can start to add data sets. And so what we've done here is we've added a uh, genes data set. What happens, you'll get this yellow. What's going on is that Galaxy is processing in the background and uh, creating indexes for your data set that make it easy to slice into the data. And so that's what gives you the, um, the fast refreshes and, um, and the ability to zoom. And so then what you get here in this case is an overall summary of the density of genes. And so, um, yeah, that's, what, that's what's happening behind the scenes. Um, we can look at our tracks with different display modes, so we can expand things. We can see um, a packed version or all, different, um, all the different features at once. Um, so let's add another feature. We're going to do some uh, variant calling. So one of the variant detection tools in Galaxy is uh, called Veriscan, and so this is going to take alignments back to the genome and try and um, assign variants. We can as also assemble some transcripts using uh, cufflinks, which you've already talked about. And so now we have a bunch of data sets. We can just say add, add data sets again, put in a bunch of data sets. And what we see here is, oh, I've got these data sets, but no data, right? So it'll say no data for this Chrome Contig. That's because, well, that's, that's because there is no data. As it turns out, the <coughs> initial um, uh, sequence data we're putting into this analysis is not covering the whole genome. And so what we can do is uh, see a different view of this. And so over on the right, there's an option that says display in Circster, which gives you a genome-wide uh, interactive views inspired by um, a tool called Circos. And so um, we can either by clicking on that Circster button or say open in Circster, we can for any data set now see this view. And what we see here is now genome-wide, so this is chromosome 12, this is chromosome 17 and 18, we can see where the actual data is. We can add additional tracks and customize uh, various things in the search review as well, and it's zoomable. Um, nice thing here is we can add things like gene fusion. So this is coming out of Top Hat Fusion, and now we can start to see um, connections between um, fusion genes in different regions. And then now that we know where our data is, we can switch right back to um, the Trackster view, and now we're seeing uh, places where data is actually located. Um, this is also showing, so these are more continuous data tracks. What we can do um, is group them together, so any set of tracks you could join into a uh, composite track and get things like rainbow tracks um, and other things like that. Okay, so. Those are some of the things that are possible in the Trackster environment. Um, just one other capability within Galaxy is Galaxy Charts. Um, and so here the idea is to be able to create um, various kinds of standard uh, charts on, your, uh, on, on the data you have. And so with all of this, what we're trying to do is make it so that you can keep as much of your data out on the server, out on the internet as possible, and just bring what you need to your local machine. And so that enables much faster turnaround as you're doing these kind of um, um, iterative um, things. And so, um, skip that. Okay, so you say you have a data set. This is just a, a tabular data set in this case. 
um, which has functional interactions. And so um, we can click on this thing here. We had Scatterplot and Trackster, and we also have this um, charts capability. This brings you in and basically gives you a bunch of different plot charts. Um, you can see how it says, how many data points would you like to uh, analyze? And so we're trying to um, optimize different chart types for the amount of data you have. So here, we're going to actually select a heat map. Um, and then you, have, you can add different um, columns in your data set, right? So for whatever, whatever data set you have, this is saying, okay, column labels, row labels, and the actual value, because those are the things you need for a heat map. And then uh, Galaxy will uh, give you a heat map uh, that easily. We can do um, clustered heat map. And so what the difference is here between our blue and our um, gold here is that some of these charts can be run entirely without doing additional analysis behind the scenes. Um, and so that allows you to just visualize your data very quickly. But lots of these things are going to actually require the data to be reprocessed and actually run some analysis that's going to take a little time. And so that's what um, the, these gold analysis are. In this case, what it's going to have to do is run a clustering job back on the server and use that information to actually draw your plot. And so that's why it says um, clustered heat map. You can do the same thing, but now after that job completes, we get um, a uh, more informative heat map where things have been clustered. There are, you can, all of these um, visualizations are interactive. They all run inside your browser. And so in this case, we can actually inspect, look at the row and column and the values for each cell in this heat map. Um, each chart type is going to be slightly different in um, what it offers. Um, and just to, things are customizable as you would expect. You're not going to get, you know, full, full, complete customization, but this gives you um, most of the things you would expect to create an interactive chart. Now, yeah, and you can actually create links to any database you want from these heat maps, for example. Um, can, we can do selections, so on. Um, OK, so skipping a little bit, OK, just another chart type, histograms, we can save in a PDF or SVG here, so you can put this, you know, use this in uh, another document. Um, right, additional chart types, this is showing a, another, another histogram, and so lots of different possibilities uh, within here. Okay, so one thing you may notice in the Galaxy interface is this uh, little icon up here. So this enables something called the uh, scratchbook. What happens sometimes is people want to be able to keep multiple data sets, multiple um, charts, all uh, visible at the same time to make comparisons. And so what you can do at any point is click on the scratchbook and then either a visualization or a data set you can add into this overlay. So now when you load anything, it's going to load in the scratchbook pane, which you can enable and disable at any time. And so now we can very quickly put together multiple visualizations about, um, about any, anything that we want. So this gives you a way to keep visualizations and data sets around and to make comparisons between them. Um, so that's basically bringing different visualization tools into one screen? Yep. Yep. Um, I don't, I'm skipping, but you know, lots of charts, pie charts. These are all, all in the, note, the handouts that I gave you, so you can figure out how to do them. Um, okay, last, uh, just a couple, of, a couple of more things. For the people on the more technical side, the idea here is that visualizations are just like tools, and it should be easy to add them in. It is a little bit more complicated because to integrate, to, because these visualizations are on the browser side, I, we, we actually can support both server side and browser side, but the browser side are much better. You, you need to provide a little bit more information to integrate them, um, but this, this is relatively straightforward, and so other types of visualizations um, that have been integrated, so this, was, this is a phylogenetic, dynamic phylogenetic tree visualization that a summer student put together. Um, I talked about Zerkster already. 
Um, another interesting capability is this idea of visual analytics. Since we have all of the tools and all of the visualizations in the same environment, um, we can actually try and use visualization to refine our analysis. And so this is your top hat cufflinks workflow again. And now in the Trackster environment, these are cufflinks assembled transcripts. And what we can do as a start, this is just filtering. So there's a filter button and I can filter on all of the various criteria and I can, I'll just see um, the filtered version here. But then I can also do this run on complete data set. And so what's going to happen is when I'm filtering, I'm just filtering the visible view. But if then I want to take all of the <coughs> elements that meet the filtering criteria I came up with for some other analysis, I can do this and now I get a new data set in my history, but that has applied that filtering criteria genome-wide. We can take this concept a little bit farther, and instead of just thinking about filtering, we can actually think about modifying the parameters of analysis. And so again, here we have our cufflinks transcripts. And if there's a tool icon here, we can actually modify the parameters to cufflinks. And so in particular, we can modify things like um, here, I believe, the um, minimum isoform fraction is being modified. And so we have three different uh, results of changing the parameters to cufflinks and seeing how our assemblies change in response to those parameters. And so we can use this to optimize. And it runs locally again. And then once we've um, optimized the parameters based on, you know, particularly we have loci uh, where we can do spot checks, then we can um, run these things genome-wide. Um, one other little uh, uh, tool that I, you probably wouldn't want to use here, but we can take this concept a little bit farther and ask how we can explore the parameters for a tool like Cufflinks efficiently. And so in here, we can click on this button, which takes you to what's called tool parameter space visualization. And now we have our Cufflinks UI again, but instead of uh, just having a single value, we've said, I want to explore the range from 0 to 0.1, taking three samples. And um, so here are all of the various combinations of those parameters. And we can actually, for regions we've chosen, see all of the different assemblies corresponding to those parameters. And so um, this gives us a way to basically select a set of parameters and then, again, go back genome-wide and apply those. Um, I already talked about this. Um, yeah, just the last thing I'll say on visualization is we've tried to make this very extensible, and one of the things we're very interested in right now is um, linking visualizations within the environment. And so here's just one example of that that um, actually uh, a research scientist in my lab was presenting at the meeting here, which has uh, the Trackster browser and a high C heat map browser that are linked, right? And so you can work with either of these visualizations and because um, they're, they're connected in terms of their um, axes, they communicate with each other as you're doing things to keep everything in sync. And so you can use those capabilities to start to link various different kinds of visualizations uh, within the environment. All right, so we've got at least 12 visualization types. Um, integrating custom visualizations is quite easy. All right, last thing people might be excited about. I mentioned this yesterday, so um, this is something that uh, is, exists now and is coming more and more, which is interactive programming environments inside Galaxy. Um, so a problem that we, we're, I don't know how to even call it a problem, but um, we, there, let's see. Okay, so for one class of users, which are those who really have no programming or informatics expertise, um, using existing tools may be the best option. And as I mentioned yesterday, for more informatician types, um, you can use this environment through APIs. But one of, you know, one phenomena we're seeing a lot more now is you, that users um, want to go beyond what the existing tools provide, and lots of people are getting more um, programming experience without necessarily having the informatics environment experience, but, you know, with between things like software carpentry and such, if you can get some facility with, say, R and Python. So we'd like to give people the flexibility to use both of these environments. Now, there's always been security problems with that, um, but 
Essentially, this is getting close to solved these days with a technology called containers. What that means is we can now actually spin up these interactive environments inside Galaxy. And so what you have here in this particular case is the um, Galaxy IPython environment. You can, it's like a visualization. You can get at it from down here. And basically what you'll get is a running IPython notebook inside Galaxy, and you can start doing analysis. And in here, so what this is saying, get 72 true. This is actually going to pull a data set out of my history. And then I can, in this case, I'm going to use some R commands within IPython. And so I'm going to read that <coughs> couplings output. And I can make my own plots, right, using conventional stuff that I would find in R. But I don't have to worry about any of the back ends and, and issues. I can just use a little bit of R code to build whatever I want in here. And I can explore data and so on. And then I can put anything back in, so I can both save this back into my Galaxy history and put any of these plots um, back into here. And so uh, for those of you who are interested in this, this is something that um, is available and is, it's, it's con in con early continuing development. Um, and I hit my target pretty well. OK. Yeah, so collaborative editing of these is not, of IPython and uh, Jupyter Notebooks right now is not great. You can definitely share it around, but not have simultaneous editing. But, but, but yeah, you can share it, you, someone else can modify it and get it back and continue. The big, the big push right now that I'm really focused on is the full provenance connection. So one, one thing that can happen with these notebooks is you can um, do some things and then go back and change something and that that can, the, the history of that can be lost. So that's what we're trying to fix right now, is make sure you can always roll back in time. Yeah. Whew. Any questions, comments, anything you want to know about anything? OK, cool.